Hello and a very warm welcome to our half-term messy church. It's lovely to have you with us today uh, and hopefully through this whole of half-term as we have different crafts and different activities for you to be doing in and around Yaxley and in your home. Messy Church, this is our third Messy Church we put out now. A Messy Church is about coming together and being together, having fun, doing crafts and usually eating together. We can't do that at the moment, but what we can do is we can share some resources with you and we can be doing this together in our own homes this week. And so I hope you really enjoy the activities that we've put together. Hopefully you've already picked up one of these bags. These are available from the porch in church. Uh, so just walk around the church and there'll be a stack of bags in there. So go and take one. And that's got a lot of the things that you'll need for this week. One of the most important things is it's got a timetable or different things that's going, that are going to, be, going to be going on this week. Um, so it's got your Explorer pack. It talks about the messy church, which we're doing now. There's a scarecrow trail in our churchyard as well. We're going to have a thankful tree in our porch for you to come and hang your prayers on about what are you thankful for at this time. And then we're going to ask you to bring any wonky veg that you've got and we're going to donate those to people who are cooking for those that are homeless and in need at this time. And we're collecting those during this week as well. There are lots of other things as well. We've got colouring in the kits. We've got ingredients and recipes for making bread which is one of our messy church activities we've got some games for you to be doing that you can do at home with your family and then we've got lots of other bits in here that you will need to take part in messy church and so make sure you've got one of these packs first of all if you need to stop the video go and do that pick up a pack and come back home and then start doing our messy church I'm so pleased that we've got lots of people helping out with Explorers this week, lots of our church family, who you're going to see in different videos as they do different activities. So I just want to thank each one of them. I hope you enjoy seeing different people and all the ideas that different people have. It's really amazing. And so we're going to pray at the start of our messy church. Father God, we thank you for this season of autumn, for the changes that we see around us. And we thank you for our half-term holiday as well. And we pray that we will have a break and a rest during this time. As we take part in different activities today, we thank you for your love and your care. And we ask you to be with us always. Amen. So let's see what messy church activities we have to do together today. And I hope you really enjoy taking part in our messy church. Today, I'm going to tell you how to make a scarecrow, which in itself is quite scary because I've never actually made a scarecrow before. But the powers that be thought that if anyone could make a scarecrow having never made one, it would be me. So, first of all, everything we use, we already had. We haven't gone out and bought anything, and neither do you need to. It can be any size subject to which clothes you're going to make it out of. You might make it out of um, a child's clothes or an adult's clothes. You might want to make a policeman or a fireman or a farmer or anything else. How about even a school child? We've decided we're going to make a gardener because we're often gardening. So old pair of trousers. I'm going to stretch it out on the table, old shirt, and I'm putting it out on the table just to show how it's going to work. Allow for it to be tucked in, and now I've got to find a pole that it'll sit on. Now you'll see I'm not bothering about it going past the feet, because if you're going to put it outside, it might stand on the ground, or you might have to knock another stake into the ground that you can then tie this to for it to stand up in the garden. But you can see it's long enough for us to hit a head and a hat at that end. The other thing is though, we've got to have one 
that will fit across to do the arms. So you need to just check that your stick is long enough for the length of your sleeves. Those are, that's fine, I can see the join so I know where it's going to go there. So we're ready to start. The first thing I have to do is just put the stick I've chosen for the sleeves down a sleeve, making certain I can get it out the end, and back through the other one. Why have I got to do that? Well, the stick doesn't bend very well, so I can't actually get the arms in if I don't do that first. What I'm then going to do is just button up most of the front, and then we have to pack, I won't button that just yet, we have to pack the arms with something. Now you can use anything. You can use old paper you might have. Just screw it up and shove it down there. You might use plastic bags. You could use old clothes. Anything you want, just shove it in the arms. So, when you get back, I'll have stuffed everything into these arms. See you soon. Hello, today we're going to be making an easy bread recipe. The first things that we're going to need are 500 grams of strong white flour, but be aware we are going to need some extra for dusting. We're also going to need 300 millilitres of water. And here I've got a 7 gram packet um, of yeast. Also going to need um, about a fair good pinch of salt. And we're also going to need some olive oil. Okay, so in a large bowl, we are going to go and add our flour. We're also going to add our 7 grams of yeast. We're going to add our salt as well. And move the tips of our fingers. We're just going to give that a good turn around. The next thing that we are going to do is we're going to add our water and 3 tablespoons of oil. However, before we do that, we are going to make a well with a spoon in the middle. And this is going to make it easier to turn in on itself. It makes the well pretty big because there is 300 millilitres of water and that's quite a lot. Right, there we go. We're going to add our olive oil. I've got about three tablespoons here. And then we're going to add 300 millilitres of of water, like so. I'm just going to start to turn this around, like this, and if you notice what I'm doing, I'm just starting to bring in some of the side pieces as I'm going, to try and get this water to thicken up. Like so. As I go around, it's now getting thicker and thicker. At this stage my dough has got a lot more thicker. We can see that it's starting to come together, although I've still got a lot of flour. So at this point I'm just going to really beat it into the dough. And using the side of my spoon I'm going to push it against the side up to get all of that flour in. And when you're really confident that um, it's really coming together, we can just take all of that off pop the spoon down and we can incorporate our fingers just to try and get in um, to try and get all of that dough to form and become a nice soft dough and if you find that it's um, become too dry um, you can add a bit of flour I think mine's going to be okay although if you need to that's perfectly fine 
can see now it's really formed into a dough. There's still quite a bit of flour, so I am going to use that. But you should feel that it's really nice and soft. If it's not really soft, you could add a little bit of water. Now we've got a really important bit to do. We're going to pick up your dough, and if you've got any flour, just pop that out on the work surface. Um, if you haven't got any flour left in the bowl, just add a bit um, more. That's going to be okay. And we're just going to start to knead it. Now this kneading process is working the gluten inside the dough and it's going to take some time for that reaction to happen. So we want to be kneading for about 10 minutes. And you should see that it, it will start to be sticky at first. That's alright, we can just add some flour onto the table and we'll be okay. And you can start off by just rolling the dough with your hands like this and then get in to start to knead it as you go further down. Keep on adding flour when you need to as well. Okay, so I've kneaded my dough for about 10 minutes. If I prop my finger in there, we can see that it starts to spring back up, which is really good. You can also see that if I stretch it, it is really elasticated. It's really nice and stretchy. And what we want to do here is we just want to make it into a nice ball like so. Just pinch the bottom and twist. Just trying to get it nice and clean on the bottom. It should look like that. Then we're going to get a bowl. I've got about um, a tablespoon of olive oil here. Maybe a little bit more. I just want to go around the sides of it, of the bowl, and make sure that it's got a nice amount of olive oil in there. Not too much, give it a little bit of a swirl, I'm going to put a little bit more there. You don't want to over oil your bowls, make it really nice and light. And I'm going to put the bowl on its side and just spin it around, like this. I'm going to put my um, dough in the bowl, like so, and I'm going to cover it with a clean tea towel. I'm going to leave this for about an hour at room temperature, so just leave it on the side. Or if you want to, you could do this at night time and leave it in the fridge overnight, which will work again. But we want it to about double in size, we want it to get nice and big. And this is called proving, and it's about letting the gluten and everything in it expand and get some air in there. So my dough has been um, resting for a while. It's, I think it's been resting for more than an hour and it is very big in size. It's looking very good. So we're just going to pop that on the side and what we're going to do is we're going to bring it onto a lightly floured work surface. If you, what, what you need to just peel it away from the edges like so. Turn it upside down, should just come out like so, and we're going to knock knock it, as they say, and we're just going to start to poke it sort of thing, just to release the air that's been trapped in here all this time. You, you can find if yours is a bit greasy, have plenty of flour, I've spilt some all down the sides there as well. Just knocking it, just with the tips of our fingers pushing down, like so. Okay, so we've done that just just for a little bit, not long, like so. And now we're going to make it into a ball. But we can see it's really, really elastic, really stretchy. The gluten's worked really well in it. It's working really well. Pop it into a ball. really want to make it look presentable because this is what it's going to look like when it's um, baked with the final product. So when it's in a ball at the top you pick it up like this and you can squeeze the bottom of it and just turn it like so. 
and do this. And there we have it. The next bit, we're going to get our baking tray. Like so. And I'm just going to move this out of the way. And put my baking tray there. I've got some olive oil and a brush. Now you can just use baking parchment, although we haven't got any. So I'm just going to lightly brush this down. Not too much. Just a little blob will do. We don't need much at all, really. Make sure it's all covered. And we want to let it prove, and I really don't want it to stick. So I'm, I'm going to add just a little bit of flour. Not too much, though. There you go. I'm going to place that as it is in the bowl. There. And we're going to put a tea towel over this. Going to use the one from before so it's clean. And this is going to rest for an hour. This has been proven for one hour. And I've just put the oven on, on 200 degrees, or gas mark 7. And um, we've got this here. It looks really good. It's really nice and springy. I don't want to ruin it so be very gentle um what we're going to do is we're just going to do a little bit of decoration so using a sharp knife we're just going to cut across like so just piercing that skin like so and that will expand lovely when it's um in the oven I've just got some flour we're just gonna sprinkle that around not too much, but we don't want to stick anywhere. And this is our um, bread. We're going to bake this in the oven now. We're going to bake it for about 25 to 30 minutes until it looks nice and golden brown. And it should be really hollow when you tap it. And then we're going to cool it down on a wire tray. Here I've taken my bread out of the oven and it's looking like this it looks absolutely amazing if i give it a tap sounds good as well um i hope yours turned out well and i hope you enjoyed making this bread thank you for watching so now you stuff the arms what you had to do then is tie the other stick to the point where it crossed. Remember the join. And once you've done that, do up the buttons of the shirt and stuff it full and tie it shut. And in true Blue Peter style, here's one I finished earlier. So now it's time to get the trousers on. And because it's going to go on like that with its legs apart, there is something we have to do, which is why I said old trousers. We need a hole at the bottom of the trousers. So I'm just going to cut a quick hole so that I can put my finger through. And then a stick will pass through there. Legs apart and up around the body. And I can do it up. You can guess what I'm going to say now. It's now time to stuff the legs. So again, take all the material you've got and stuff the legs. You may find it easier to stuff from the bottom. You may want to undo this and stuff from the top. That's entirely up to you. But when you've finished, subject to what you've used, you may need to tie some string around the legs to stop it falling out. And it may be necessary to put, to put a belt on to hold the trousers on at the top. I'm going to use a nice piece of rope that I've got. Obviously, I'll just cut a piece off. So, go on with that, and I shall see you in just a moment.
Okay, so this craft might be a little bit messy. So you might want to find a tray, or I've got my lap desk with me, my unicorn lap desk, because I rather like unicorns. And unicorns can be found in the Bible. If you don't believe me, you're gonna to have to come and talk to me about that one. But just have something that will collect up any rubbish from this. It's not hugely messy, but you just need something to contain the rubbish. So we're gonna be making scratch art leaves, okay? So you've got a leaf, You've got a pointy stick and you've got a magnet as well in your bag. So have a search for those. You need to take your pointy stick and it's got two different ends to it. One's a slightly fatter end and one's quite a, a pointed end. So you can use both of those. I don't know if you've looked out of your window today or perhaps you've gone for a walk around Yaxley. And have you seen the beautiful leaves that are on the trees at the moment? They are such lovely colours. And maybe you've got a pile of leaves in your garden or perhaps on one of the pavements. And it's really good fun to kick leaves as well uh, and just see in a big pile uh, and just to walk through them. So perhaps you've done that at some point. And we're gonna make our own autumn leaf now. And so all you need to do is take your leaf and have the black side up facing you. Take your pointy stick and all you've got to do is start scratching out colors on this. So, I'm going to go for the top leaf first of all and I'm going to use the, the fatter end and I'm going to make some different colours with that as you scratch off the black bits it's going to make all different colours there I'm going to try and neaten it but I might not do very well at that there we go okay and then we'll make some other patterns and some of the other bits of the leaf now you can do whatever you want, whatever pattern you might want to do is absolutely fine. Make some great scratchy noises as well. And think about all the different colours that you can see around you as it's autumn, as you look at all the beautiful things. And then you need to give your leaf, your leaf even, sorry, a bit of a shake off to get the black bits off. And that's what I've done in part. So I've done bits and pieces on all the different leaf bits and I'm going to add a bit of colour to the centre now as well. So I'm going to take my bigger end again and I'm going to draw a heart shape. And underneath that it's blue but you'll find all different colours as you scratch off the black surface. And just do a bit more decoration around it. then give it another tap on your tray or whatever surface you've got and then you should have a leaf that's really colourful hopefully if you scratched off different bits of the black surface you'll see the colours that are underneath it and see if you can find any of those colours on the leaves outside as you look at the leaves on our trees. Now there's one more thing you need to do because this is a magnet okay so you just need to take the sticky bit off the back Stick the sticky bit onto the back of your leaf like that and then you've got a magnet so you can go and put it somewhere that's magnetic so somewhere like a radiator or a fridge or somewhere like that but go and make sure you ask whoever's in your house that is caring for you today that it's safe to do that because some scratches some surfaces can get scratched otherwise so you have made yourself an autumn leaf magnet and I hope you've enjoyed making that So you've stuffed the legs, you've tied off the bottom so it doesn't fall out, you've put a belt on, and then most probably a bit like me, you found you didn't have a very big waist. So I've given our gardener some braces so his trousers don't fall down while he's out in the garden. But he needs a head. So you want something that's going to be quite big, to suit the size of the body you've got. If you've got a child, you might want a smaller bag. I suggest you just take some bin bags. I don't know how many litres these are, just a few bin bags. So you end up with a relatively pale head, like that. And you're gonna stuff that full of material 
and tie the bottom. But that then makes the head. We can draw a face on it and it can go in here. And that will be your head. You'll also need to find some old gloves, old pair of gloves. Well, we are, because we're gardeners. And I'll put the, the gloves on his wrists, making certain a stick runs down one thumb, one finger, and the same on the other side, which you can't reach from here, and tie a bit of string around it. And when all that's done, we'll be able to stand the scarecrow up. See you soon. Hello everybody, so we're going to make a bird feeder. You may want to do this to attract birds in your garden or just help them with their food source as it gets colder during the winter. In your bags you should have found a piece of string and two lollipop sticks with holes in. You're also going to need that food source. So an apple or you may even want to try this with a fat ball. First, get mum and dad if they've got an apple corer or another type of implement to make a hole through the apple. Or, as I said, your alternative may be the fat ball. Just make a hole through the fat ball. Take your piece of string and make a good large knot in the end of it. So I'm going to thread this through once. And then again. So I've got a nice large knot in the end of the string to stop it pulling through the sticks. Take the other end of your string and thread that through one of the lollipop sticks. Pull the string through and take your second lollipop stick and thread it through there also. Pull the string all the way through and you should end up with a cross shape. So take your food source. So in this case I'm going to use the apple. And next thread your string carefully through the apple. Don't press too hard because it may bend the string as you try and press it through. So push. Once it's through the other side, pull it fully through and there you have your bird feeder. Next, let's go and find somewhere to hang it. So you may have a tree in your garden, or you may have a bracket you can hang it on. Here we are in our garden, and we're lucky enough to have several trees I could have chosen to hang the bird feeder from. I've chosen this one, I've tied a knot on one of the branches, and you can see the bird feeder dangling there. Yesterday I saw a robin in the garden. You look out and see what birds may come to your bird feeder. So you may get robins, blue tits, you'll even still see blackbirds about this time of year.
He now has a head. It's all tied up. He's sitting comfortably. He's going to need a hat. He's also going to get, I have to point out, of course, I, the stick was a little bit long, so I chopped the end off. Get your mum or dad to cut that up for you. I've also got a scarf he's going to have, and then when he's all done, I'm going to draw a face on him. So just give me two minutes and I'll finish him off, assuming my cameraman doesn't burst out laughing soon. See you soon. If my instructions have been clear enough, you've now got a scarecrow that looks <laughs> something like this. And excuse the camera shake, because the cameraman's laughing too much. But he'll go out in the garden for scarecrow week, or whatever we're going to call it, for half term. And I look forward to seeing all of your scarecrows on the St Peter's website and in your front gardens when I walk around. Ours We'll be outside our house, number 106. Best of luck. I hope you've had lots of fun taking part in all of our different crafts today. There's been so many different things to do to help us think about autumn and about all the good things and lovely things that God gives us. I want to thank our team again, our Explorers team, for all that they've done and hope that you've enjoyed seeing all the different videos. And so as we come to the end of our Bessie Church today, there are a couple of things. We've talked about the pumpkin prayer already. Don't forget your pumpkin prayer is in your bag. And you've also got a little luggage tag in your bag. And what we want you to do is write some prayers on this. Write things that you're thankful for and then bring it to church and hang it on the tree that will be in the porch. And then we're going to collect together all the thankful prayers and we're going to say thank you to God for everything that he's given us. So we're going to pray at the end of our messy church. Loving God, we thank you for all the good gifts that you give us. We thank you for the fun that we've had today by doing messy church together. We thank you for creativity, for fun drawing and painting, for fun making things. And we pray that in this season, we will know that you are close to us and we ask this in Jesus' name. Amen.
Don't forget your timetable. Don't forget that there are more things to be doing this week. Bring your wonky veg to church on Wednesday and Thursday, and this will tell you the times to do that. We've also got the Scarecrow Trail, and again, bring your luggage tags and your thankful prayers. And we look forward to seeing any pictures that you've taken of the crafts that you're doing. Pop them onto Facebook, onto our pages on there, and we'd love to see those. So enjoy the rest of your half term, and thank you so much for joining in our messy church today. Take care, bye.